Hi, welcome back for another segment of Deb's Dog Tricks of the Trade. And this is Kira, who's been an actress for us before. And if you go back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of videos. I'm going to do a series of videos where I'm growing back her top coat. So she was shown at our March specialty, March 15th. I've got my little cheat sheets here. Then on April 21st, I showed you guys a pet trim. I took off all that nice two and three inch top coat because she's not going to be shown again until maybe next year. And with this lockdown, let's say she was a normal show dog. She still wouldn't be shown for another six months. So April 21st is when I did the pet trim. On May 14th, I put her up on the table with some other filming and I showed you how much she had grown out from using a 5F blade. Now my sister and I have been doing this forever with these dogs that we want to keep showing, but we don't want to have to do this horrible top coat work. That is all the time consuming part of keeping a show dog is their top coat. It isn't their feathering and all this other stuff. So she will get a bath once a week and towel for 24 hours. That's a must do if you want to grow back the hair for a show dog. So that's what I'm going to do with her over the next couple weeks and I'm going to show you how her top coat grows out and the time it takes for her top coat to grow out from using a 5F blade all the way up to her being show ring ready again. And I'm, I could probably say okay I could put her in a veterans class or a miscellaneous class with this much top coat. The judges aren't, especially a veteran, the judges aren't going to, ah, hunting dog class, miscellaneous class, whatever. But if you want to get a really powerhouse dog back in shape to go out for that major or to go back into that specialty ring and to be dead straight honest to that judge when you're showing it in a regular class, then I will earmark that weak point and show you, okay, now she's got enough top coat to go back into a regular show and be competitive and be right. So we're going to do it maybe every two weeks. And the other thing that I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to put her over here on the swivel table and I'm going to start doing some pumice stone work. I didn't think I could, but when I took them out and I tried, it was like, ah, you know, so there's already undercoat growing on her. And trust me, when you are working on a liver and white springer, forget Carson that grew out for two months. I mean, that was enough. That took me three and a half days, you know, to get him back car back down to a show ring finish, as you saw with the five or six videos that we did. But liver and whites are way different and a lot harder to keep that top coat under control, trust me. So again, because she's my dog and I care for her, all right, um, this is a visine bottle, but in it is colloidal silver and it's a special concentration of colloidal silver. Just don't go out and buy something from a tax store for horses because colloidal silver is used a lot with horse, horse people. This is a special percentage. It is on one of my other videos where I'm talking about let's get ready for the dog show and I explain how to empty out the Visine bottle and please, please, please don't use Visine or Clear Eyes or any of that. I mean, these dogs aren't smoking pot. You don't have to come back and show your parents that you're straight and you aren't out partying, okay? These dogs need to be done in the most healthy way. And this colloidal silver is great for their eyes. I have some up at the house. I have it down here. So as I groom her, I'll put a few more drops in here and there. And you'll be able to see her go from the red hall. She does have a red hall. Troy did not. She tends to have a bit of a red hall. Let me pull up this to where it will get show ring ready and it won't be so red. I mean I should have showed you before I put the drops in because already uh, already <laughs> most is the most of the red is gone so you'll have to trust me on that but we'll keep working on it. Okay. I'm gonna go over here and put her on the spinny table because it's just way easier for me to deal with the camera and the dog. Before I do that Again, in one of my past segments, I was talking about let's get ready to go to the dog show. And I was showing you what was in my equipment box, what was in my tack box, 
and I mentioned that you know you can get all you can go to the dog shows and they all have these little embroidery shops at the dog shows vendors and how you can get towels now I got this towel from Land's End but look how cute now I, I have my my Springer Club logo with Land's End the artwork already done so I ordered this with that but at the time I didn't have my K&D logo and besides I wanted something bigger so this is the kind of embroidery that you can get done at the little vendors at the dog shows right and then that just drapes so pretty and so nice over your whole table so when you're not doing your bucket baths especially when you're when your grooming section is empty and you want it to look nice when you leave to go out to dinner then all you have to do is have all your grooming tables have these beautiful towels on them and also when I get my dog done and ready for the show ring they can also be up here sometimes I'll put another towel on top so that I don't have to launder this one that often I really don't want to put this through the laundry so it's more of a decoration than it is a useful towel but you get you get the drift and of course then that matches here's one of my original ones from years 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 ago again this was just a vendor at the dog show so and this is just your regular standard towel that I got at Walmart or it's probably a little bit nicer than Walmart but you know what I mean so these are just some fun things that you can do when you're showing your dog and when you go to the dog show if you don't have a kennel name then just do that and put your dog's name on it right it's fun and then you can have your matching smock and remember this is all about fun even if you're a professional handler you should like the work you do you should have fun but for the average person with just one or two show dogs and you're doing it quote unquote as a hobby as your leisure time on the weekends Here's your barometer for that. Fun. And honestly, when it stops being fun, stop doing it. Because if it's not fun for you, you transmit that bad down to your dog, and it sure is, it's not going to be fun for the dog. Although most dogs love dog shows. They love all the performance events that the AKC has to offer because the dogs like to spend time with you. As a pet, they're just sitting in a chair. And what? They, they, they really see you maybe when you're watching TV, right? Maybe when you're watching TV, they'll be up in your lap. And when you feed them. But especially Springers that are highly, highly, highly intelligent. This is a breed that is at its best mentally and emotionally when, it's, when it has a job. There's a saying, a Springer Spaniel needs a job. So give your dog a job. And, sh and showing can be fun. For you and the dog okay now I also talked about the thinny shears that I that I use here is the con air this was $12 now this has a double pack I would probably never use this straight shear because I like something a little bit better but there's the $12 thinning shear that I get and I just got that one I either got this off of eBay or Amazon I usually get them off of Amazon but I think last time around they had sold out and your Miller's it's a Miller's Forge slicker. Just any slicker where you can do this with your hand and it's soft. You don't want to get a slicker where you grate it across and it hurts. If it hurts your hand, it's going to hurt the dog. Okay? Everybody needs a nice Bel Belgium comb. This is my favorite. If I can't find this, I have to stop. Everybody in the shop has to stop and we have to find my favorite comb. All right, so there we've got that. We've got that. We've got that. All right, now going to start talking about pumice stone work so I am going to be mostly out of frame which is fine because I really just want to show you guys what I am doing like I said those who are joining me on the live Facebook feed don't worry if you can't see anything close up because I will be doing that kind of work here with this bigger camera all right so when you buy pumice stones and you can get them from Cherry Brook, generally a dog show outlet. And it's, just, it's lava rock is what it is. So this is the way it comes new. I'm not going to open this because I don't need to. Okay. 
And here are all the ones that I have been using. Okay. And I keep them stored in Ziploc bags because the minute you start using them, they turn to ash. Like you see on all the disaster movies. Oh my God, now the roof just, just blew up. Yeah, yeah, it's going to turn into lava ash. So anytime you use these, oh my God, I can smell it now. Keep them. I keep them individually in these, and then I keep them in here sealed up and locked up. And then this I will break in half when it's new, and I will start with a half. And then as I go, that half gets whittled down to these smaller pieces. And there's going to be a point where I'm not even going to be able to use these, but we'll see as we go through today. I'll try to give you guys over here on the cell phone a bigger look because I am going to have to bring this up. All right, now, when you're using these, I don't have a normal top grooming table, the one with the ridges. Both of mine have different types of tops. But while I'm using these, when I feel like the edge is going dull, I'll just go like this against the ridges on my grooming, grooming table and then that gives them a really rough edge again. So that's what you want to work with. So if I were on a regular grooming table, I would pretty much continually go like this, this, this to get that edge. You can see I just have the one edge along here. Okay, now I'm going to pull this up. Now, just like the lifting and layering when you're brushing, that lifting and layering, you can see the line of the skin. Then you bring the next section down, the next section down. In that same way, that's how we're going to use this pumice stone. It's going to be pretty, it's all lifting and layering. That's it. So, so there I have lifted that section. Okay. And curl, this is how you get the curl out of a liver springer too. Now, what I'm going to do, I can see the skin. So I am taking this pumice stone from the skin down. From the skin down. Then I go to the next section. Then I go to the next section. Try to get this as close as I possibly can. Then I go to the next section. And I just keep, if I were doing this in real time, I would just keep working up the top of the coat like that. She's not going to have, what you're pulling out is the undercoat. It's that fuzzy orange stuff that we all hate. This stuff, this makes your dog orange, right? And it also makes it curly. So that's what the pumice stone is doing. But you have to use it properly. I've seen so many people ruin top, top coats with these. You never, never, never go over the top of your dog with one of these. No, no, no. You get down to the skin. You make yourself a little line. And just where the skin is, you see that right there? From the skin back, then I pull down, the, I'm just pulling down the next section, then from the skin back, pull down the next section, skin back. Now, of course, when I do it, I do it rapidly because I've been doing this for 50 years, so it's a little bit easier for me to do it fast than slow, but look just in less than a month from shaving her off with a 5F. Look how much undercoat there is. Look at that. It's amazing. So this is how you would work the top coat on the entire dog if they were liver and white. Never had to do this on a black coat in my life. But you can also see why if you're not going to show a dog for a long, long time, why well, you might really want to try that 4F or 5F blade. Now, remember when you do that trick, 
you never take the clipper down in here. This is all her regular natural coat here. This is what I showed her in. So you, you kind of come off the sides like an airplane and you never, never, never clipper any of that. And again, I might tell you, depending on how long it is between dog shows and clippering them off at the five blade, you might want to keep this long too. And pretty much just use your 5F technique or your 4F technique, whatever you're comfortable with, to do over the entire body. And I'm telling you, that makes a big, big difference in the time that you're, you just, you can't let a liver top coat just sit and not be groomed. It's the coat and you are both, and the dog, are all better off just taking a clipper with a 4 or 5F and just going over the whole bloody top coat and then at the right time start to let it grow back in again. Because this is just why I don't have an Old English Sheepdog, a Maltese, a Yorkie, or a Poodle. I don't want this much coat work in my life. I spent 10 years with Bobby Fisher doing terrier coats from Airedales, mostly Welsh terriers, Lakelands, thank God an occasional smooth fox terrier. But I just spent too many years doing nothing but this every single day for hours. And that, my dears, is what it takes to keep these liver springers Look at all this. And that's just from when I shaved her off. Look. Now, the other, the other nice thing, pumice stones are magic. Because not only do they get this fluffy, fuzzy undercoat out from under the dog, but guess what? They change the color of your dog. No crap. If you use a pumice stone on your liver springer, you will make the top coat that is left two or three times darker than what you normally are used to seeing on that dog. How cool is that? And then you don't have to buy my Tricks of the Trade. What is, what is it? Tricks of the Trade 3 from my original series. Dying, bleaching, and processing your dog. There still might be some occasions when you have to use that, especially the whitener. Now, the, the, the bleaching of the dog, if they get real stain through here, by the way, is completely, quote unquote, legal by AKC rules and regulations. So you could sit ringside and use those pro products and do it. You wouldn't want to because you want to have a lot of water to, to rinse the bleach off your dog's skin. But, and... We won't talk about using dyes, but sometimes you just have to do it. And again, I, I've never used a dye to change the color of a dog's coat. I've just used it because it's come to me in really, really poor condition. It is sunburnt, so even this pumice stone work is never going to help it. And I just match the dyes to the natural color of the dog's coat. But that is another video. As a matter of fact, I've already done that video. I will get it downloaded soon into a downloadable form. So you guys can buy it online and put it right on your computer. Okay, stay. I know, I don't need, mean to be forgetting you guys. I know it's really, really hard to see. I can't even see what you guys are seeing over here. All right. But no fears, I'm getting some good shots here with this wider lens close up. Now, every time I do one of these strokes, I am down the skin. See the skin? Right there it is. And I am going from the root back, the root back, then the next section, the root back, and then the next section. But every time I am grabbing that hair from the root. I'm not even scraping over the whole hair. I'm really just kind of going like this with the pumice down. See? I'm gonna exaggerate it here. Because all I'm doing is that I'm using this 
lava stone to just pull out all that fuzzy undercoat. by the root and you don't want to scrape it over the top coat. Oh lovely. Now I don't know if you guys can see what I can see but I can see a difference in the color. Here's the line that I just did with the pumice stone. And here's the top of the dog that I haven't done. Now, I see two different colors. I see a much lighter brown there, and look how dark, dark, dark and shiny that is. That's the other thing that happens when you use these pumice stones on these liver coats, is that it makes it shiny, it takes the curl out, and it gives you a darker color. These things are magical. Look at all this. Uh, I have to look at my cheat sheet, but I think, when did I trim her down? April 21st, it's been a month since I trimmed her down. And she was, she was shorter on her back than, than this natural length on her leg. And look how much she has grown back just in a month. And if I were getting her ready for shows again, now is the time that I would have to start doing that. Now, I'm doing this, can you imagine how long it's gonna take me to do this entire top coat? So again, this is the kind of thing you never do in one sitting. You do a section one day, and then the next day you put the dog up and you do the next section. Now I feel like it's, so since I don't have the top of my grooming table to run it over, I just ran my slicker, oh yeah, oh yeah. Now I can tell the difference because now it's it's really pulling that hair out. Look at all this. You do not want to let a liver and white springer grow in and not be doing pumice stone work. I would say, yeah, when I had Connor in show coat, it was once a week. I, I, I mean, he would get groomed once a week, but on the pumice stoning, I would break it up into two days because by keeping his coat up it didn't take as long as it's taking me with her. I didn't realize that in a month she would grow this much undercoat or I would have started already last week. Before I threw in the bathtub today I got out my pumice stones and said huh I wonder when I can start showing you guys how to use the pumice stone and I took it across her and got a big wad of this stuff out and I said, well, looks like I can start today. There, you can see the skin. And when I'm using this, I want to feel, I want to feel that tug. So again, I'm just going down up against the skin and pulling it out by the root. I'm not going like this over the top coat. These things are very harsh and they're going to ruin your top coat if you do that. All you're after is this fuzzy crap. Look at all that. And this is a dog who's only been growing her top coat back in for a month. So could you imagine if you kept your Springer top coat in show coat length and you didn't do this for weeks or months or months or months or during this whole lockdown? I mean, you know, good for you, but but, but you better be, if you don't want to shave it off and let it grow back in, that's fine. Right, right. But you need to be keeping this up, even during this lockdown. You don't want to go find your dog on your couch six months from now when dog shows are back open and go, okay, George, I put the entry in. Because at that point, it's going to take you more than three weeks of the entry closing to the show, to the show date if you have a liver and white springer to get that dog's top coat back together. It will take more than three weeks. I don't recommend you wait that long. So again, I'm going right down to the skin. I mean, look at all this that I'm getting out.
Now the big cocker kennels, English, English cocker kennels, Springer kennels, they just hire people to come in, terrier kennels, <laughs> like where I used to work. <laughs> they just, you know, they just hired people to just sit and do this all day long on these top coats. That's like their full-time job because the handlers really don't want to be stuck doing this kind of work, but at the same time it needs to get done. Now let's set this back. Now, I can see it with my naked eye. Look how shiny that got. Do you see the shine compared to this? How, look at that, you can even see the line there. Okay, this is where I did the pumice down down here, and this is where I have it. And look how dull that coat is. Look at the color that it is. And look how cottony it looks. It looks crappy. And, but this is the pumice stone section. And look how shiny. Do you see how shiny that coat is? And look how dark it is in color compared to where I haven't done it. Wow. Now, I haven't done anything back here. And again, you can see this whole section that I've worked with the pumice stone compared to this back here. This is woolly, wavy, fluffy, cottony, yucky. If I let it grow back, keep growing back in without using the pumice stone, it's going to curl. Now, just in that little bit, and I have tons of this on my floor, just in doing that one little section through here, this, this is the stuff you want to get out. And right, right. And if you don't want to do this, then go buy yourself a black and white sprayer. Because what I did with Carson during those three, three days of filming and grooming to get him back into perfect show, show ring condition. And oh my God, did he look absolutely gorgeous by the time we were done with him. Ah, oh, a dog's to die for. But when we first started, go look at the first video. When I first started to work on him, it was horrible to the very end. But I would rather do 10 of those, 10 of those, than two of these. Because this is, this is a lot of work. And this is a time where you don't want to leave your dog up on the grooming table forever and ever and ever. You just don't. This is why even now what I'm going to have to do is break this up into different grooming segments with her. So as I'm filming this whole series of growing top coat back out and simultaneously showing you how to use the pumice stone correctly. So again, so with every stroke, I am seeing the hair. I mean, the skin. See that skin? Yes, you can. I can, I can see you. And again, I'm feeling like that edge isn't good. Okay. Now I'm going to get in there and just from the root out. The root out. No, this is going to be in the stars for me today. I'm planned, but Kira was due. I do her every two weeks. I do all my own personal dogs every two weeks. Oh, here's another thing that's very important. Do not wash and towel and bathe your dog before this process. Never, never, never. You want to use this pumice stone on oily, dirty, natural hair. Do not bathe your dog and towel it and then do this pumice stone work. So in that regard, it is completely opposite from what we did with the black dog who had to be bathed and toweled before I could do any of the thinning shear work or the back combing work. So this is completely the opposite. Completely the opposite. Now, look at this whole section in here that I have pumice stone. How shiny, shiny, shiny. Look how flat it's laying. It's laying perfectly flat. This is perfect. Um, eh. I, another two weeks and I could have her in top coat where she could be competitive for like for an award of merit. And we'll see. I mean, we'll see because I will. I'll put her back up here in two weeks and we'll see. But I mean, already I have, oh, 
it's about the length of my Belgium comb and when I was doing that back combing on Carson I went a little bit more on her because again this is a liver coat and because I'm doing pumice stone work I am actually going to leave her top coat longer than I left Carson's two completely different animals liver and white sprinters and black and white sprinters the only thing that they share in common when it comes to their grooming is their heads, their feet, their tail, the underline, and of course how you, the conditioning, the diet, how you bathe them, how you condition them with the, re the really good Dawn shampoo mix that I showed you in one of the videos, that's the best, and um, Pantene cream rinse. All of all the basics would be the same, but it's the top coat that's entirely different. They are two completely different animals. There is nothing similar to me working on a liver and white top coat versus a black and white top coat. They are completely different. Now with the liver springers up here in the Bermuda Triangle, the Bermuda Triangle, that would be done with back combing. After I got all of this crappy undercoat out, then I would layer that in depending on the dog, the length of neck that it has, the kind of shoulders that it has, because once again, you give me enough hair and I can carve out an average or bad shoulder to something very nice. And the judge would not have any idea that it's all sculptured in by hair. As I said before, the only, only judge I ever saw in my life who knew what, quote unquote, we were doing, the show that, you know, the handlers were doing, was Ann Rogers Clark because she was a poodle handler. If anybody can groom a dog to hide everything, and it's, it's her. So there you can see in this light the difference. And I'm going to stop here because this is all that Kira can take for the day. I don't want her up here like forever and ever. I did not do this section at all and look at the difference from this that I did. It's laying flat. It's shiny. Look at the picture. If you guys can ever find the picture of, uh, of me, my best of breed picture with King of the Road, I think 1984 when I was best of breed at Westminster Kennel Club. And you look at that dog in that picture and these were the days when you couldn't Photoshop, you couldn't do anything. You were, you know, it was just John Ashby, Ashby with his camera and he, he sent it to you in the mail. That dog's coat is so shiny. And I never dyed that dog a day in his life. I didn't have to, because he was maintained. But his coat in that picture is so shiny. And it's because I kept him constantly for the three years that I specialed him in with a pumice stone. And that's where you're gonna get this shine. Now let's see if I can turn her around and show you the side that we have not worked on. Okay, so look at the difference. So this is the side I have not worked on. Do you know how many show dogs I see in the ring that look like that? That is your normal average even handlers, when they just have class dogs and they don't want to go through what I was showing you on the other side, your specials dogs for sure are getting pumice stone work. But look at that. Look at the color. Look how fuzzy. Okay, now let's swing her back around. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now. Look at that. What a huge difference. Huge difference. So, that is going to be our pumice stone lesson for today, the first one of many. And it is also going to be a series of growing her back out. Let's see how long it takes before she can be like really top notch show ring ready, not just kind of. Scott cape glued together, put a towel on her and do the best we can. No, no, no. Let's have her look spectacular in the show ring.
and we will see together exactly how many weeks it does take for me to grow her back out. But look how pretty, 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 pretty. So that is the magical pumice stone, folks. And I think that will be good enough for today because she's had it. I trimmed her earlier. She's headed for the bathtub now. So thank you so much for joining me for another section of Deb's Tricks of the Trade. And Kira and I are both going to say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>